Do you want your products seen by more buyers on Amazon, Etsy and other marketplaces? Do you want to get more traffic, make more sales and scale your brand? Welcome to the Signalytics podcast, Signal Code Unlocked, where we discuss what signals are needed to send to your customers, to the algorithms, to the ad platforms in order to get your product seen, converting and profiting fast. With your host, former top 50 seller on all of Amazon, the Professor Howard Tai. This is the Signalytics podcast, Signal Code Unlocked. Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone and welcome back to our uh, weekly session, weekly level up session presented by Signalytics and Ecom Fleet. And uh, today we have an interesting topic, which is PPC and we are like going to share how to do PPC on, especially on the low price items. So welcome Baldwin again. Thank you for joining us today as well. Yeah, always glad to be here. Awesome. So, okay, Baldwin, over to you. Okay. So uh, this week, I was a little torn this week because I didn't know how much to share or which or where to start because PPC is such a big topic. Uh, it's it's obviously a very, I guess, in-depth topic. So you can go many directions, many places, but I'll just jump right into it. And I want to say sorry if th- the stuff that I share in the beginning is going to be a little bit basic, but bear with me because when you do Amazon PPC, you have to have your foundations right or else you cannot succeed in PPC. So <clears throat> Amazon PPC, I'm just going to blow through a lot of these slides pretty quickly because it's pretty basic. These are, if you're not familiar with the, just look look over these slides on the review or when you watch this again. These are characters, special characters that Amazon allows in keywords. You can look at this later. Broad match. A lot of times I still feel people are not sure what what broad match really is. Here's examples. I'll let you look at the slide later. A phrase match. These are examples of phrases and examples of what isn't phrases. On the left, on the right side, you can see the yeses and the noes of what is and was not phrases and exact match, same here. There's actually another form called broad modify, uh, which is basically broad and then you add a plus sign, but I haven't used it too much in Amazon because the tools that I use usually covers a lot of these things when you're searching for keywords. So I never really had to use broad modified, but it, it is another way of using, having keywords that I believe came out in 2020. Uh, yeah, around 2020, Amazon allowed broad modified. Here's another thing in your auto campaigns, you have loose match, close match, which these are actually targeting keywords and substitutes and compliments. These are actually targeting ASINs. So if you ever wanted to adjust your auto campaigns where you turn off the keywords, you can turn off the loose match and close match and only target the products or vice versa. This is campaign structures regarding auto targeting and manual targeting Uh, in manual targeting. There's the, um, all the different types of things that you can target. This is pretty basic structure. You can look at this when you can. And here is Amazon's actual inside their, in their training manuals regarding their personal PPC people. These are the, this is the formula that they actually tell their people if you're going to start a campaign and you don't know what to bid, this is where you start with. So you take your ACOS target. So if you want a 30% target 
you take 0 0.03, you take the conversion rate of what the product is generally selling at. So let's say it's 10.5 and you take the average selling price. So you multiply all those together and you get your starting bid. So <clears throat> this is just a starting bid. Obviously you can adjust however you want, but this is what Amazon does when they start bidding aggressively or not aggressively, but they start pumping out a lot of bids in other platforms like Google or when they do buying, media buying. These, this is a formula that they use. Okay, important metrics to, to know is click-through rate, conversion rate, ACoS, and total ACoS, other known as tacos. Click-through rate is click divided by impressions, orders, orders divided by clicks. I mean, uh, conversion rate is order divided by clicks. ACoS is PPV sales divided by cost. <clears throat> and total ACoS is total sales divided by cost. <clears throat> These are the four main metrics that you really should concentrate on or use as a KPI in order for you to figure out how well your campaigns are doing. So click-through rate, the click-through rate is the number of times your ad shows, shown to the customer, click through to your detail page. So when your ad is shown like this, uh, it's how many times someone has clicked onto your ad. That's the click through rate. And how many times your ad has been shown. So there's four, uh, how do we determine if we have a bad click through rate? So there's four things that you have to concentrate when you do have a bad click through rate. It's your picture, your title, your reviews slash rating, and your offer. These are the four things that you can control in order to get a good click through rate. If you are getting good impressions, uh, then these are the four things you can concentrate on. There's also keywords, but I'm not worried about keywords because if you do not have the right keywords, you will not get that much impressions anyways, because uh, Amazon's algorithm determines relevancy as a factor in where they place your product. So keyword generally, if you do keyword research right, you'll be able to uh, determine your click-through rate by doing these four things. By if you have a bad click-through rate, work on pictures, titles, or reviews, and your offer. In Q4, the average click-through rate, according to PacView, PacView is a large a SaaS company that does PPC for a lot of people. They Their click-through rate, average click-through rate in quarter four is 0.35%. And <clears throat> this is for sponsored products and for sponsored brand, it's 0.53%. So when you wanna know if you have a good click-through rate, this is also a measure you can look at. Uh, so right now, currently, in Q1, or actually we're in Q2 now, we can kind of say that we're in the same area. We're probably about a 0.4% right now in terms of click-through rate for sponsored products. So for sponsored brands, I'm not too familiar yet. I haven't really looked into sponsored brands on what the click-through rate, but it should be probably looking at the trend uh, a little bit higher than 0.53, so maybe 0.58 or 0.56. It really depends, but it's generally in that area. So uh, why do we have a bad conversion rate? The things that uh, affect your conversion rate are your pictures, your EBC, your offer, your rating and reviews, and your bullet points. Usually it's these in this order. Your bullet points are last because honestly, even Amazon's starting to hide the bullet points really on some A-B testing. So when research is done, I'm sure Amazon sees that people really don't concentrate on the bullet points unless it's one of the last things that they look at. 
your main selling point is going to be your pictures. So your pictures and your EDC. And then maybe they go into the offer and see what, what the price is. And when they find that, they go into the reviews to see, is this product worth the money that I'm going to spend? It doesn't have good reviews. So this is usually in order. If you have a bad conversion rate, the things you should work on. Why do, why am I going through all this? And it's kind of basic, but I'm going through all of this because if any of these things are bad or, or you have a problem with, you can push PPC all day, all night, spend millions of dollars. Uh, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. So if you want to do PPC effectively, you need to fix these things in these orders when you're diagnosing your campaigns. First, go through your click-through rate, fix that, and then go through your conversion rate and fix that. Once you have a strong foundation, uh, PPC will be a lot easier and a lot cheaper if you are able to get all of these ducks in a row and be able to just knows any problems that you have in PPC. So now, now that we've gone through the basic stuff, let me just show, share some of the strategies. I believe a lot of buzz on low price items for PPC. I have three strategies that, <clears throat> um, I thought of, and there could be more. I just. It's a lot to talk about. Um, the first strategy is my probably preferred. If it's possible to make your product look more high quality and raise the price about 3x or 5x and bid super aggressively on VPC. Since if you're dealing with low price products, people are not able to outbid you if you are making higher margins. But in order for you to do this, in order for you to succeed in pulling this off, you need to make your product seem like it is uh, something that I guess in, in it's product specific, let's say sunglasses, sunglasses are fairly cheap. Normally they're like $9, $10. Uh, and then you have a range of sunglasses that can be brand name and they have, uh, I guess, quality. <clears throat> so if you can do your packaging and your pictures to look higher quality than your competitors that maybe they're like $9, $12 sunglasses, then you are able to increase your price because people think that there is something there's something wrong with these other lower price products because my product is more premium there's a disparaging a disparaging price between a nine dollar product to a let's say thirty dollar product or fifty dollar product if you're able to pull that off, no one can touch you in the PPC realm. If you're bidding in, ter in terms of the same type of products, uh, you, after, if you have validated that you do get sales, uh, when increasing your price that much, keep in mind that this is only for certain products that you can do this for. If it's for like, maybe like a hair clip. I don't know, you know, it's like plastic hair clip, how much more high quality can a plastic hair clip be, but certain products, I, I do believe you can pull this off. You just have to figure out how, what's your spin and how you can do it in terms of marketing and selling your product to make it seem like it's a higher quality product. The second is gold panning. So gold panning is basically when you are bidding really low on your already existing campaigns like your auto campaigns and your 
broad or phrase or exact campaigns. Generally, I do broad and auto campaigns for goal planning to basically cast a wide net um, at the bottom of the leftovers. In, in If there's any way that keywords fall through the cracks or people run out of budget or whatever it is, at the end of the day, sometimes you may not get any orders, but sometimes you really get cheap conversion. So I, I would bid like five cents, uh, something like that, five to seven cents, maybe 11 cents, depending on how much your, your competition is. And I would cast a, a net on the bottom to, to kind of pick up the scraps that people have left over. And I would run this in conjunction with your main campaigns that you're running at normal bids that you would normally run it at. This is how you can get more orders that maybe uh, will help you understand other keywords that people are missing when you go really broad. And number three is concentrate on ASIN targeting. ASIN targeting is in all of Amazon, ASIN targeting is about 60% of all sales done by PPC. A lot of people think that keyword is where you get your main sales, but actually it is not. ASIN targeting is where you get most of your sales from if you're doing PPC correctly. There's, there's two things that ASIN targeting ha gets you. It actually provides relevancy because when you are associated with other products, other things that other ASINs that uh, people are typing in for the search terms, like let's say a plastic hair clip and they click on your competitor's product, but then maybe you're targeting them in their detail page and they click on your product. If they buy your product or even if they, they click through and they, they try to find other products through the detail pages, if they click your product, that's still a relevancy point that Amazon is, is choosing that, I mean, that detecting, oh, sorry, that Amazon is detecting that, Hey, this person typed in this keyword, went to this product because it's relevant. And then they click through this, your product, and it may or may not have bought it, um, but at least it's in that path of relevancy. So this is where you gain relevancy scores. Amazon has an internal scoring system and one of, one of the scoring system is your relevancy score to the keywords and to the category that you're in. So what you want to do is actually build up a like relevancy for the product. Um, this will determine how high you have to bid in order to be on the first page or top of the SERP. If you try to, I'll give you an example. Uh, if you try to uh, bid on a keyword that is not in your category, like say you have a plastic hair clip and you're, you bid for the keyword gold watch, you're going to have to bid like $15, $20 or something high in order for you to even appear somewhere in the, the fourth or fifth page of Amazon because Amazon knows that your product is not a gold watch. Not to say in the beginning, Amazon doesn't, in when you launch a product, Amazon may not know what your product is, so maybe it's cheaper back in the beginning, but eventually you will not be indexed for gold watch if you have a plastic hair clip. Another th thing that uh, will happen if you start bidding aggressively in ASIN targeting is that you get the choice badges. Choice badges are formed by when people are looking at products. They're, they're looking at different products and Amazon's telling people out of all of the products that people look for, for the keyword plastic hair clip, 
uh, people found or Amazon has found that either your product is has been consistently in the search of the products or that when people look for that that product or when the customers are going through that comparison journey your product stands out people buy your product or people uh, click on your product more consistently so that's usually how you get the choice badge and that's basically it's what it is the main choice badge it means people choose this product so a lot of the time a lot of times people ask me how do i get the choice badge so this is usually how, what i tell them so that's these are the three tips i have for low priced items for ppc next i'll, I'll go into some of the more regular ppc if, say your products are 20 30 40 50 dollar price range even twenty dollars is kind of still kind of low in terms of your price point generally you want to be you want to have profit when you do make a sale so general price point maybe fifty dollars is is a good spot um, but here's four strategies that you can implement there's probably more but this is these four are my main strategies that I specifically target for all of my campaigns. One is brand protection, your own brand. Target your own brand. Uh, I, have, I have a slide later that goes through all of these, but I'll go through them really quick. Brand protection, your own brand, protect the brand, bid on your ASINs, bid on your keywords. Competitor targeting, basically it's, some people call it competitor attack or competitor, uh, yeah, basically you're, you're being on the offense or offense offensive campaigns find your competitors keywords brand names go after those brand names generally competitor targeting if you're going after their brand name their keyword it will probably yield you a high a cost but if you go for the asins then you may have a better chance of lowering your a cost by going after their their product pages number three is your ranking campaigns Ranking campaigns are basically specific campaigns. Maybe I would only run like three, four, five keywords at a time using this campaign to basically just specifically target keywords that I want to rank for. And your discovery campaigns. This is basically your, your normal funnel, your normal campaigns that you would run with your auto, your phrase, your broad, your exact match, just to discover more keywords and, and have optimal return on your, your findings. Usually this could be split into two. Um, discovery could be one campaign and then profitable campaigns would be another one. But for me, it's generally, I keep them on all the time. I never stop running discovery campaigns. So to me, discovery and your profitability campaigns are one and the same. So here's where you should run your brand brand protection, sponsor products, and the bullet points tell you to target exact and phrase of brand keywords. All the search terms that capture the brand's campaigns should be excluded from all the other campaigns that you're running. So for example, you have your brand protection, you negative keyword that those keywords let's say your brand is xyz brand negative keyword the xyz brand in your discovery campaigns or your well you would never run a ranking campaign for your own keyword but if you do negative on that side uh, products from the same brand should be targeting against each other so that you cross sell your products and you are also doing a protection against people going into your listing and having leakage from your listing. So imagine we we're talking about that earlier about the choice badge, right? 
if you have a lot of products that is in the same category and people are clicking around in the searches in the like the detail page if you have that all blocked off uh, and they come into your listing they have no choice but to buy your product because you have control over that section the related products uh, well at least you probably won't have 100 percent domination on that page but at least you have a couple of different products so it is more likely for them to click on another one of your products than it is for you to lose that sale and leak it out to other products. A sponsored brand, this should be used to the same logic as sponsored products and sponsored display target, eats and targeting your own products. So this is brand protection. Competitor targeting is basically the same thing, but the opposite way of targeting your competitorizations, targeting your competitors' uh, keywords, brand name. And then this is your ranking campaigns. So your ranking campaigns are gonna be your targeted short list of keywords in exact match, doing high bids, and expect to get high ACoS because you are trying to rank for your product. You're trying to be the number one keyword, uh, number one spot for that keyword and rank your your ASIN with that keyword. <clears throat> uh, I would also target ASINs. Uh, when you target ASINs, you want to target the number one products. Maybe number one, number two, because of the relevancy score. And also, when you do target uh, the ASINs, remember in the beginning how I said you there's a way oh i don't think i put it on the slide i'm sorry in in amazon there's placements and in placements there's a distinction between products and keywords and in the key like when you're targeting a asin sometimes in your search term list when you download the report you get keywords and people don't know why sometimes they get keywords in when they're de when they're targeting ASINs. Well, you get keywords because your product actually shows up if you're targeting the top per competitor. The, no the person that holds the number one spot for ranking for that keyword. And that's another way of showing up on that keyword without actually having target the keyword. So these are the three campaigns. The last one is your discovery, which is just in general, your normal funnel. Uh, I did want to showcase our tool that we do use at Signalytics. Uh, it's basically, we have a, we run our PPC through AI. And I think I got the go ahead from our CEO. Howard, uh, that we can announce that we are now taking self-service clients or customers to use our products. And I maybe I can do a little demo and go through it a little bit. So guys, this is basically mean what Baldwin said, that you can use our tool by yourself as well what we are using in the signalatics and you can use that tool as well we are preparing for it and the the results we are getting with that tool you can get those results as well using by using it yourself so maybe and if I'll you just have, do a little bit yeah um, sure. just run through the, the program really quick is that okay Sinjar? yeah uh yeah i cannot see on my end yeah okay <clears throat> so this is our demo board there's nothing in here yet but i will just show you basically how easy it is to create a campaign here's your dashboard it has all your your sales your hold on let me adjust this better so that everyone can see you you can look at your different types of metrics your a cost your total a cost your cost of sales 
you have what we call the O to P ratio, where it's a sponsored share. So you can keep track of your organic and your sponsored sales so that you don't go, you don't cannibalize your organic sales with your sponsored sales uh, through cost per click. So it basically aggregates everything from the search term reports and everything from the API that we get from Amazon. And you can see it on your dashboard. Uh, here you can create your, your campaigns. Right now, I don't have any ASINs in this account. So all you really have to do is target whatever ACOS you want. So let's say I want a 30% ACOS. General, usually there's a section here, a box that has uh, a pro your products. So it'll automatically pull your catalog and it'll have all your products in here. And you, you put in, what do you want in this campaign? So if you want a list of your products in this campaign, you can choose it from, let's say, all hair clips or all sunglasses or whatever it is. And then that's basically it. Once you have that, the AI will start running bids and your campaigns at 30% ACoS. You can put a daily budget if you want. Um, normally, I just leave this open because you let the AI do its thing. But if you really do have a, a budget that you want to keep it to, then you can add the budget. You can also see the stats when when the campaign's running down here, and you can have specific tactics. Tactics we call, basically, these are uh, single campaigns that will be either negative keywords or targeting keywords or products. And you can name them whatever you want. I don't think I can create one right now because I don't have any products in here. Oh, yeah, I do. I can. So in here, you can target ASINs or you can target keywords. You can target phrase or exact. And then that's basically, it'll create a campaign for you. And there's some advanced features you can you can tell the AI, hey, I want to spend at least this much money a day. So uh, this will kickstart your campaigns if you have a brand new launch. Maybe the AI doesn't know what to target yet because it doesn't have enough data. Then you can say, hey, I want to spend like $5 a day at a minimum. And you can turn off your auto campaigns, your product campaigns, whatever you kind of don't need anymore or feel like you don't need. And you can see the history. So this is the same thing with sponsored brands, sponsored display. It's the same thing. Sponsored brands is a little different. It has all the, like, the your logos and stuff in here. You can put, have the different fo formats of videos or the product collections or the store page or the product listing. Same thing, you just target, I want 30% ACoS, and you can optimize by ACoS, or you can actually put in what we call forced product visibility, is if I want to be consistently number one, I want to bid $5. And then you put in a daily budget, like $100 a day. And then you write your headline, and you're good to go. And you put your products in here. So that's how you create the sponsored brand. Sponsored display is even easier. Type in your ACoS. There's two things, remarketing and product, and there, there's both. So you can have two campaigns, one for remarketing and one for product, and then you can add your ASIN into the list. And that's basically it. It's really easy to set up, and it takes the guessing. The, we just let the AI do everything. Everything else is just insights on strategies, keywords. There's a profit and a loss calculator. So if you want to put in your metrics, you can you can look at our board and see if you can um, uh, if how much money you're making and stuff like that. Uh, let's see what other stuff that's cool here. We have a search trend. So basically, this is also. You can say, I want to look up hair clip. And then it'll pull up from analytics. 
these SFR of the trend of hair clips. <coughs> so this helps in product research too. When you're looking for products, you want to see the trend of a keyword or a trend of a type of product. And you, here's our keyword tools. So if you want to add a keyword, say hair clip, it will give you a bunch of uh, sorry, I need an ASIN, which I don't have. So if you type in the, uh, or actually go ahead and click keyword, hair clip. If you type in the ASIN, it'll spit out a bunch of related ASINs and a bunch of keywords that is associated to those ASINs. So that it will help you, it's basically a reverse lookup if you use Helium 10, but it's actually kind of more sophisticated because from the, the similar products, you'll have a list of ASINs and it'll pull up all of those ASINs with those similar products into your keyword list. So it's not just reverse ASIN lookup for one product, it's actually looking up all of the products. And that's basically the tool. Uh, we have a promotion for all of our audience right now is two months. We'll let you use our tool for free. And, but there is some limitations where you only get one strategy. So this we call a strategy. So you, if you want to test out one ASIN or whatever you want, you can do so. Oh, um, right. awesome. That's yeah. great. Well, one, one question that our tool is running for the all markets, right? It is not just for the US. Yes, all markets. You can have as many markets as you want. And if you go to our website at Signalytics, then go under PPC. I believe we don't have it up yet, but just put down that you're interested and we will send you instructions on how to install or how to hook up your, your account with us. Yeah. So guys, if you really need, if you need this tool, like what we are exactly using to, to generate the sales and to control our a cost, just go to signalatics.ai and hit them up or you can message me on the Facebook as well. If you really need, if you need this tool, then I'll, uh, I'll take care of it. Yeah. And also if you go on our website, put e-conflict podcast and, and we can make sure you get the promotional two months free if you choose to go that way. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, great. So guys, if you have any questions related to PPC or about the tool, please comment below so we can take the questions. So we have a, uh, like comment that is it really worth using? So um, of course, this is really worth using that we have, we are generating like millions of dollars of sales from PPC by using this tool. So if it is not worth using, then we are the first ones to do not to use this. The second is I don't see this on the software. You can just email on the signalatics.ai and mention that you uh, you want you heard about this on the level up amazon group or you can mention e-complete then then you will have the offer or you can message me or inbox me on facebook guys if you have any more questions regarding ppc please comment below so Balvin, there is one question which is pretty basic and which is which is really important for 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 the beginners. I I can say that how to select keywords to do PPC on. Yeah, good question. Uh, so <laughs> with our tool, <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> it does it for oh. you. <laughs> but if you do want to do it, so there's people there. I mean, people do the keyword research from Helium 10, reverse hookup, reverse lookup, or you can go to brand analytics, look at, or actually product opportunity explorer. If you're in the U S market, or I think it's on all of the markets now, right? The product yeah. opportunity explorer. If you go there, you can type in whatever niche and look at 
for the products that is related to that keyword, you can download all of those keywords that Amazon gives you. For me, I have a tool that, let me just show you. Uh, hold on really quick. Sorry, OTP. All right. All right. So we have a question from Osama Hafiz. What if our CTR is good, but not the conversion? Then what could have been the reason for that? If you're here, when I explained it, there's, I think, five things that I talked about regarding why a product has bad conversions. Most of the time, it's going to be your pictures, your <clears throat> EBC, your price, or your reviews. Your bullet points is probably last, but if you try to figure out whether or not what to fix, start with your pictures. Your pictures are usually the ones that sell your product. So I, I highly suggest people invest highly in, in pictures. So actually I have a script. Uh, we look at the back end of a product. So I type in whatever ASIN that I want to look at. Uh, and basically it tells me their back end search terms, what they, what they're using. So I just collect all, all of these search terms. So for this one, it's the generic keywords. So it's like Damascus set, nice classic chef. And these are all the keywords that they're targeting. So we call this, this is our JSON tool where it just looks at all the ASINs backend information. You can look at all of what they put in their backend, their pricing, their bullet points, their description. If they have an EPC, you can see what they're doing in their description and stuff like that. So this question is just putting keywords in their description when they have an EBC. Yeah, you can see, uh, yeah. Anyways, this is one way that you can, you can do it. It's just basically a JSON script to look at the keywords in the backend. Yeah. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah. Let me see. Uh, in terms of pricing, this is our, our pricing for right now. This is the introduction, introductional thing that I was talking about earlier. One marketplace, two months free, one user, two strategies. And then here's the starter. It's $2.99 a month, two user, 50 strategies up to $5,000 ad spend. And after that is the growth plan, which is $4.49 a month, five users, 50 strategies, uh, up to $10,000 in ad spend, and then increases to $100,000 in ad spend. But at, at this range, we do a 4% cost, 4% on your ad spend. And then if you do 200,000, 3.5% on your ad spend for the professional plus. And then if you exceed that, then we can do a custom pricing for you. So by, by users, what does it mean? The user means two users or two brands? <clears throat> users means two logins. So if you and your partner want to each have your own access, then you can each have one, or if you have a team of PPC people, then they can have logins of their own. So you don't have to share logins. In terms of brands, we do it by uh, accounts. So it doesn't matter how many accounts you have, we'll take them all. So if you have all of Europe, we call, we count that as one account and Unlimited marketplaces, you can have US, Canada, Mexico, and then all of the pan EU, that you'll still be 299 a month. So guys, if you do not have any more questions, then let's wrap it up. All right. All right. Yeah. So, well, yeah, let's conclude. Thank you so much guys for, for joining us today as well. And we will keep doing these sessions. And I just want to mention again that these sessions are only in the 
level of Amazon and Signalytics group. We are not doing it open. So make sure you join and learn some new stuff, which we are actually using by ourselves. So whatever we are like explaining here, whatever we are presenting here, we are actually using those techniques and which are we are actually using your stuff to generate sales to to build our brands and to build our clients brands so make sure you learn and you ask questions inside the group and we would love to answer those questions and uh, that's it for today thank you Baldwin. thank you so much for explaining the ppc part especially for the low price items and uh, thank you so much again okay thank you See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Do you want your products seen by more buyers on Amazon, Etsy, and other marketplaces? Do you want to get more traffic, make more sales, and scale your brand? Welcome to the Signalytics Podcast, Signal Code Unlocked, where we discuss what signals are needed to send to your customers, to the algorithms, to the ad platforms, in order to get your product seen, converting and profiting fast. With your host, former top 50 seller on all of Amazon, the Professor Howard Tai. This is the Signalytics Podcast, Signal Code Unlocked.